OK, so we're going to add a tile map to this because currently the player having these crappy platforms isn't the best way of playing a game when you've got this amazing, powerful 2D game engine. So let's add the tile map. So the tile map just uh, goes on as a child of the top level game. So it's an actual tile map node. You can search for it there. When you click the tile map node, you'll uh, I'll go over some of the settings for this tile map node. Obviously, I just remind you again that all the documentation for this is with this dock button right here. So if you did want to click on this, there are tutorials to get you set with using this. All right. So um, if you do get stuck, uh, there is no need to be stuck. Just go uh, go take a look at how to use this from the documentation. So I'll cover some of the basics. The tile map right now uh, needs a tile set. It's also got this um, quadrant size. Now, I'm never quite sure if I need to set this, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, icon.svg. If I double click icon.svg, I can see what size it is in its properties. So I can see it's 128 by 128. Obviously, if you're using a different tile set, you're going to have to work out exactly how big that tile, those tiles are so that you can use them. I'm just going to literally just use this one um, in its simplest form and it's the full tile and um, it'll look a bit chunky but we'll go with it anyway so back to the tile map again the um, tile set you can click on the empty here and click new tile set then you click on the tile set itself to open up the tile map editor and the tile set editor that appears down the bottom I'm just gonna lift this up so we get a bit more of a view so once you uh, I'll just go through the steps so you need to create your tile um, your tile set here in this tile set editor. Now I'm going to keep it super simple. I'm just going to drag icon.svg onto it. Actually, I'm not. So when you have your tile set selected, you'll need to set the tile size to the size that you would like. You can see that there's a little the little um, grid that you see here is my tile set editor and it's clearly nowhere near the size of my um, my tiles. It's well off. So I can set tile size here. So I it was 128 by 128. Um, so the that will give me the press enter now and you'll give me the same size tiles as the tile um, textures that I have. I also, while I'm here, I'm going to add this physics layer. So I do want it to collide with stuff. So for this particular tile map, I'm going to want collision. So I'll just leave everything as default and then we'll go to create it. So over in this tile set editor here, this is where I would drag in my tile set. Now in a, in a full tile set, I'm just going to automatically do this. So in a full tile set, this would be a big texture with maybe, I don't know, like 16 tiles by 16 tiles down. And you'd be able to choose separate locations and parts of it. Um, it auto tiles a certain amount as well. So sometimes it gets it right and, and helps you out and does it for you. In this occasion, we're just going to keep it simple and do it ourselves. So icon.svg, this tile right here, when I select it, I'm um, still in the tile set editor. Um, I can see all of its properties um, in the select thing. So I've set this up correctly. I click on select and I can scroll down and change any of these values. The key thing here is this physics layer. If you unfold the physics, you'll see that you can set the shape for this. Now there's an actual shortcut. I could, if I want, add um, add the polygon tool and I could drag these out, but I can actually just press the F key on my keyboard and that'll do uh, the default shape for that. Um, obviously, if you've got different tiles, you can change the shapes here too. But for most cases, it's just a case of pressing F and get the default one. Obviously, you can go into more depth here in the documentation about what it is you want to do to add and delete points to make it a bit more accurate for say a spaceship or something. So I have this set up and it should simply work as it is in order to use it. So I'm not in the tile set editor anymore, but in order to use it, I'll go to the tile map editor. Um, if I had multiple tiles, they'd all appear here and I'd be able to use the tools to select them and add them in. I was 
going to select this one and you'll see with this uh, the only tile that I have selected I can hover over in my view here and I can click to add uh, tiles and um, click and drag to do uh, multiple and right click to delete any tiles that you want so once you've got that you've got an amazingly powerful tile map editor already set up and it's super fast to be able to create things um the you'll see the one weakness of this um, now that I've got this amazing tile map editor. If I play my game and I start playing, you'll see that um, the camera doesn't follow. Um, and so we'll need to fix that next. So fixing the camera is really simple. I'm going to go to my actual player scene. So um, the player's on my scene, but I'm going to go to the actual player scene so I can change the, the prefab, the top level one. And I'm just going to add the camera directly to the player as a child. That will make it move around as the child moves. So I'm going to add a node of camera 2D um, onto this. While I'm here, this camera 2D node, I'm not going to change it, but I am going to change uh, the position smoothing and enable that so that um, it does smooth a little bit as it moves. Um, control S to save that and then go back to the game. When I play this now, you'll see that there's this purple camera that is centered around the player. Playing uh, the game now, you'll see that we've got the camera following the player a little bit. Now, it doesn't jump high enough, so I'm just going to go and change that too. Have a little think about how you would do that and try and do it yourself before you play the video but in the um if you get stuck just go straight into the uh, script for the player and i'm going to change this jump velocity so it's currently minus 400 i'm going to make it minus 800 and i might just up the movement speed just a touch too because it's quite a big sprite so it looks really weird to be moving so slowly Hitting play now, we should have a little bit of a higher jump and we should be able to go all the way um, along our level. Now, the next problem that we have is this. So if I happen to fall off my map, I will fall forever and will not respawn. And it ain't a game if you can't win and you can't lose. So we'll need to fix that now. So I'm super excited about this bit because we actually have to do some code. So um, I'll just explain this. Uh, what we're going to do effectively in English is that we are going to store the player's start position. So if I click on the player and I look at the transform, I can see it's like, oh, let's make this. If we make this 600 um, and let's make this 250, um, those two numbers are fairly easy to remember, 600 and 250. And we're going to make that the start position. So in English, um, what I'm going to do is every frame, all the time, I am going to check to see if the player's position, and I look at the transform over here, if the player's position goes maybe above 900. Yeah, so that's like lower. See how it's going up as we go down. So if it gets to, say, above 900, I want to move back to the start position, and the start position I want is 600 by um, 250. So let's just go to the code. So I'm going to create a variable. All the variables always do the variables up the top with all of the other variables um, and constants. So I'm going to do a variable. I can call it anything I like, but I'm going to call it um, start underscore position because uh, that's it's going to what that's what it's going to be the start position, and I'm going to make it equal to, and I, I want this to be um, a vector two. So this is a an unusual data type that you may or may not have seen before, but a vector 2 is an X and a Y. Vectors are cool. Um, they are in 2D, like this is a vector 2, and in 3D. And they just literally contain the two values, the X first and then the Y. So um, I believe mine was 600 by 250 was the values that I was going to store. And I can save that, and that will have stored my start position. So let's just do the code down here. So remember we were trying to look to see if the position of the player was greater than 900. So to get the position, um, it's part of the uh, character 2D. So the position uh, you do with if position, and then you can say dot and you can say x or y. So if position dot y is greater than 900. 
So the this should look fairly familiar. Um, to look to see the properties, you can click on Character Body 2D. I'd just like to explain. So these are some of the values that this um, this function already this uh, class sorry already has. But you'll notice that position isn't there. But you can find this if you see all of the objects that it inherits that it goes down to. So um, the character body 2D is also a physics body 2D, which is also a collision object, which is also a node 2D, and node 2D has a position value, so we know its position. You can also see that inside the 2D when you look at the player, because you can see that it's got a character body 2D, but you can see it's also got this node 2D and the collision object 2D. So all the things that it inherits, it builds functionality on top of, you can access in your scripts as well. So this one, uh, obviously, is the position, uh, the, the node 2D's position. So we use the lowercase version inside of the script. And then we've got the X and the Y. So back to the code again. So the, we have the if, uh, if position.y is greater than 900, and then we need the actual action. And so um, all we want to do is we want to set its position. So we're going to say position equals, and we want to make it back to the start position, and that's it. So this entire thing is a respawn. Now, this is a code comment. Um, you've probably seen those before. Um, but you want uh, R-E-S-P-A-W-N, you probably want to make sure that you're doing this all the time as you're coding, rather than trying to do it afterwards. Um, it's just good practice, and it'll, you'll, you'll thank me for it when you can look at your code and see their code comments and quickly understand exactly what's happening really, really quickly. So let's just test that this works. So to test it works, I'm just going to jump off, and when it goes beyond the 900, you see it comes back. Uh, all the way back to the start again. So the respawn actually works. And lastly, I'm just going to remove this platform. Now that we've got the tile map, we don't need it anymore. So um, the game is almost a game. We can move right and left and we can jump. We can change those values as well. Um, when we fall off, we can uh, respawn back at the beginning again. Uh, the only thing that this doesn't have yet, um, other than uh, good graphics, um, for functionality wise, the only thing it doesn't have is the ability to win, so we're just going to do that in the next video.